And so there are four core pillars that we think a, a truly digital NHS will enable. The first is massively improved patient care. The second is uh, actionable analytics that are, arise from us being able to digitize most of the data that's exchanged across the system and make that available to clinicians and managers to do things like much more advanced research, both at the hospital-wide level and um, at the population-wide level. And then finally, I think it will enable a, an open um, innovation system through true interoperability. That will enable us to bring a wide variety of providers into the system and for clinicians up and down the country to be able to commission um, much smaller, much more nimble startup-like um, organizations to provide some of the long tail of um, specialist and niche applications that nurses and doctors are asking for. So a quick look at what digitization could actually deliver with respect to improved patient care. I want to take you through a case study or um, a narrative that's based on the fundamental idea that the first challenge is really to use the existing data that has already been digitized. Combine that with the data that sits on paper and try to identify which patients are at risk of deterioration. And when we know that more efficiently and more safely and more quickly, escalate the appropriate intervention and the care that's actually required um, through better task management, better communications, and better coordination of that individual patient's care. So here we have a patient, Robert, who's been admitted recently with an abdominal pain and has stayed in overnight for observations. Here we see the ward nurse has access to um, a mobile app and is taking the temperature of um, Robert and is able to input the data on the mobile device at the bedside, um, immediately scrub through and very neatly and very clearly enter that this patient actually has a temperature of 39.2 degrees. And so we see that the new score has gone up accordingly. And that automatically should send an alert to um, the doctor on call to say, OK, there's some concern here. We need someone to take another look. And here we have Sarah, the junior doctor, on her own mobile who's received this alert or notification and is walking towards the bedside. And during that time, she's able to review everything about that patient, a detailed patient profile, every bit of data that exists in the system today in one single canonical feed. She searches for the patient across any ward, any specialty, any consultant across the entire hospital. Immediately, she's presented with an overview, the most important pieces of information that she needs to do a quick exam, including things like underlying diagnosis. She can see here that this patient's had their tonsils out recently by looking at past procedures. She can see the medication that the patient is on. And she can also see the most recent observations, where we now see that the blood pressure has actually risen to 110 over 80. If we, if we swipe across, we can see the same data presented in a different kind of stream. Here we have the linear record of all the events that have happened to that patient in admission. So she doesn't have to arrive at the bedside, scramble for the notes, attend to a bunch of different systems, and of course the worst thing, which is ask the patient what's happened to them in this admission, ask them to recall exactly what's happened to them. But no, she actually has, in a consistent timeline, all of the information that she needs to make a judgment about what's happened in the last 24, 48 hours. And of course, she can view a lot more detail on the specific results. Here we're looking at the urea and electrolytes, where she can also see that the creatinine has recently spiked <clears throat> over the last 24 hours. She swipes back. She can also see that the patient just yesterday had a chest x-ray. Here we have both the image and the radiology report, where we see that there's a suspected pneumonia. She can zoom in and examine the image in more detail. And all this happens before she gets the patient's bedside. So now, as she's having a conversation with Robert and examining him face to face more closely, what she's able to identify is that um, the patient does, in fact, uh, need, uh, uh, it looks like an operation. It looks like this patient may need an appendectomy. And so immediately, she's able to securely uh, uh, message and communicate with the consultant on call. And this is the piece that's really important. How do we very quickly escalate this condition to what's obviously required? And so she has a text message exchange both with the consultant and, as we can see here, with the ward nurse, all of whom are able to communicate what set of actions need to happen given that this patient requires escalation. The consultant pictured here, Maddie, is able to examine the past history, 
check on the diagnosis of the junior doctor, and is herself then able to advise that we need to go into surgery immediately. We start by issuing a new job, which she's able to select uh, from the drop-down menu, prepare for surgery, and we can see all of the subtasks that are associated with that. So to zoom in a little bit here, we can see that this patient needs to be nil by mouth, somebody needs to put an IV line in, we need antibiotics signed off, we need fluids, consents, and so on and so forth. And so automatically, each of these jobs that is associated with this operation are dispatched to the appropriate person. And of course, after Robert's ob um, operation, we can also continue to remotely examine all of the key respiratory um, rates, as well as SATs and temperature, and any other OBS that are associated right at the side of, of uh, the patient's bed. Here we have an example of the consultant remotely um, able to, re to review on her personal mobile um, the appropriate information that's relevant to her remote monitoring. This is something that Ara mentioned to me repeatedly that you know, often a consultant after surgery likes to keep, tra keep track of what's been happening to that patient and it's really difficult to get access to that data so that they can help continue to coordinate care after surgery.